morning guys I wanted to share something else that's been on my mind it's always on my mind actually but uh, driving to office this morning in this nasty weather but uh, anyways we had a small storm actually we had we had a big scare uh, you know how the uh, news usually blows up uh, a storm that could possibly happen um, and actually incites a lot of kind of fear or worry in people um, so of course as a contractor when storms come in and hail and whatnot, which we don't actually experience much hail in Houston. It's very, uh, I won't say rare, but it's uncommon for us to have like a, a yearly storm or a, a truly big hail storm like San Antonio and Dallas experiences on all the time. San Antonio, as a matter of fact, 2016-2017 had both pretty big storms, but you're talking about hail that was seen a miniature basketball like for kids um, even that big actually putting holes in roofs uh, kind of crazy insane uh, things going on there so they, they've got some crazy storms those things happen uh, but as far as our area we don't experience those things like San Antonio, Dallas Panhandle, Texas uh, which well, it seems like every time it rains they get hell um, so, the news puts out these forecasts about, oh, it's going to be this and that and whatever. And that night uh, when that happened, uh, and as, as it was coming in, of course, it's part of my job to, you know, watch it and uh, try to understand what's happening, how the impact is going to be. But then actually, when it plays out, what is the actual impact? Uh, turned out for us, it wasn't that bad. I think uh, I made a joke to a customer and, uh, you know, I think there was two fallen trees down in the entire Houston metropolitan area and the news seemed to jump all over it and make it out a big, to be a big deal. There's a small area, I did a video in uh, yesterday, and a um, small area, little neighborhood that didn't have a tornado touchdown, but definitely had a funnel cloud come down stir some winds up, knock some uh, shingles and things over. Um, I was in another part of northeast part of town and the customer said it picked up his swing set um, and uh, like a three setter uh, or three person uh, swing set decorative thing out on the patio and picked it up and he said he saw it, picked it up and moved it like 20 yards and set it down like Mother Nature's way of redecorating their yard for them. Didn't tear it up. There were no holes. Uh, didn't rip the. There's like a little canopy covering or anything. Uh, 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 you know, canopy covering covering them, and it didn't rip that up or anything. Uh, so just picked it up, moved it, and said, "Here, this is where this should go. It looks better, I guess." Uh, so that storm played out to not be a big deal. Um, of course, Houston, we've been through so much over the last several years, especially with Harvey and then the tax day flood a couple years ago. Um, you know, April 15th, I believe, was the actual uh, tax day flood. Um, you know, Harvey and then uh, Amelda came through last year, I believe in October. Um, that, in certain parts of town, dumped 18 to 21 inches of rain in like six or seven hours. Sorry, I don't have the exact stats, but it was something crazy like that. So, obviously when we watch those things, usually our phone rings a little bit more uh, when people, you know, when, when the rains happen like that because it exposes the different things that I put videos out. And the reason why we're doing that is to help you realize where those are coming from. But, you know, there's, there's some weak spots in uh, folks' roofs and those tend to leak when we get those big rains like that. So our phone starts ringing and people, you know, can you come out and fix it? Um, but then uh, one of the negative things is that you get door knockers. Door knockers um, 
come in and, and they look at these things and or they look at these storms, they watch them and they see the the two trees that are down and they figure out which neighborhood that they're in or they see a fence that's knocked down, which is another part of our business, our business by the way, but uh, fencing business goes crazy in the spring for two reasons. One is the HOA usually sends out a letter to people, or a lot of them send a letter out to people saying, hey, your fence looks like pardon the French, but crap, and uh, we want you to replace it. Or, um, you know, fence posts are real, you know, a lot of times are real um, fragile, if you will, after about eight to ten years on most builders' fences. Um, so the winds come in, knock them down, push them down. So uh, they'll, uh, they'll see those things or whatever and just prey on people, uh, prey, P-R-E-Y, on people and go out and uh, use all kind of tax tactics to uh, you know, try to get business. So uh, they, uh, let me fix this a little bit so you can see my messy beard this morning. So uh, I've seen and people I personally know uh, that are in the business as well going out and hustling and uh, you know whatever door knocking, trying to get people, and uh, door knocking, uh, if it's fine, we don't do that, I've never, I've never gone around into a neighborhood and door knocked, it's just not, it's not something that, I just don't want to be the 8th, 9th, 15th guy knocking on your door and saying, hey, did you know your fence is down, or did you know you have blown off shingles, of course you do, I would imagine that you did. And maybe I'm dumb for just assuming that people know that. But I don't want to be that guy just knocking on your door and saying, hey, we can do whatever, because it, it just looks bad. Um, especially in a hail storm. When we do actually get a hail storm, hail is so, it's a lucrative thing for a contractor. When you're dealing with insurance companies, um, roofing contractors make a lot of money off of it. Uh, insurance pays well. Uh, roofing contractors will all of a sudden become siding experts and window experts and uh, all these different things because they're trying to do all these things to get as much money as they can or whatever. Guys, we, we do roofing, we do fencing, and we do custom seamless cutters. That's what we do. Uh, I, have refer, uh, I can refer you to somebody that handles other things in most cases, even like AC, plumbing, and electricians and stuff like that. Uh, we have a small network of uh, businesses that we work with um, and can can send you names to guys that can actually help you and, and give you, you know, good service and not rip you off, stuff like that. So, uh, but door knocking and um, these guys coming to your door, just be careful. A couple things to look for. One, nowadays it's so easy to, to Google somebody. Uh, and I will tell you, we do not, uh, it's easy to Google somebody, look up their business, and look at their reviews. If, they don't, if they've been in business for 30 years and they have eight reviews, I think something's wrong. It's like pulling teeth to get people to do reviews for whatever reasons. Uh, and, uh, you know, not to brag or anything, but... I, we always make it a point at the end of the job. Are you happy? Did we do what we said? Um, you know, everything spelled out on our uh, invoices and everything. It, pretty much everything that we we were to do is there. Asking folks, you know, making sure that the customer is satisfied and they got what they expect. Um, and so, even the happiest customers sometimes. I don't like to bug people, but I ask them at least once, maybe twice, and that's about it for a review. Uh, but I think we have on Google, we have like 53 reviews and it took, it's taken a long time to do it. It takes a lot of effort to get folks to go on and do it. Um, so I understand not having a ton, uh, but if you've been in business for 10, 15, whatever years, and especially if you're a localized business or whatnot, um, you should have some, some reviews and obviously you want to find a company that's got good reviews. Uh, but, uh, If you see another warning sign is if you Google somebody and you see that they have uh, 
hundred reviews. That's cool. I wish I could get, or I'm hoping to get 200 uh, eventually. And we'll get there. Uh, but look at those reviews and see if, uh, usually you can tell by reading those reviews, are they genuine? Uh, are they all five stars? I don't want to be double-minded or uh, whatnot on this, but we have a lot of five-star reviews. I mean, that's what we're aiming for, right? Um, but occasionally you're going to get somebody that's ticked off at you for, you know, just because the sky is blue. Uh, you know, we always, you know, in the event that was to happen, I always try to, you know, understand where they're coming from and that whatnot. But without going on a tangent, you're, you're going to see a few bad reviews from time to time. So look for reviews on Google. Uh, one of the biggest things that you want to that you want to look for in a roofing contractor is do they have insurance? Not do they have an insurance certificate? So I learned something one uh, several years back. I went to uh, Waller and Waller County. So the city of Waller, we were doing a uh, we were doing a roof, and I think if you sneeze in your front yard in Waller County. You have to have a permit for it. Uh, so I went to pull this permit for this job. No big deal. We do it. Katie does it. Uh, several different parts of town. You have to have a permit. Uh, usually not a big deal. You go down. Most most cities don't even charge you for it. So uh, they just want to know that you're doing the work, what you're doing. Uh, you're you know uh, it's their attempt to help hold you know contractors uh, accountable. So. Um, this lady was, I gave her my insurance certificate and the lady that was working there picks up the phone and starts dialing the number on my insurance certificate. And so she calls and verifies that the certificate was genuine, that uh, it wasn't just a printed or you paid a monthly premium one month, got your certificate, the date doesn't say that it's, or the date says that you're good until next year or whatever, six months, next year, whatever, and uh, you don't pay, but you still have a certificate. So a lot of people fall for that. Uh, I've, I've run into the, where a contractor told the customer it was good. Um, they believed it was good, and uh, found out on next door or whatever that the same thing was happening that they didn't pay their um, premium that their certificate was actually out of date even though it said it wasn't so um, get an insurance certificate if you have a roofer out or a contractor out and they get hurt for whatever reasons and they fall and they want to sue you they can um, and I've heard many stories that they have, but they can. And then these days and times, you know how uh, the legal process is. So um, protect yourself uh, and make sure that the uh, contractor has actually got uh, at least a million dollar uh, policy, if not two million. I believe two million is pretty common. That's what we carry. So get their certificate and verify the insurance. Look at Google, see what their Google ratings are, uh, check that out. And then what are they offering? Are they offering you, uh, are they standardized? We standardize on Atlas, but uh, there's so many reasons why. That's a whole other video. Uh, but are they offering you, oh yeah, we'll, we'll put on any shingle, whatever color, color you like, whatever, you know, whatever you want. Um, that's that's not a very good practice um, for mainly because the guy doesn't care he doesn't really know about the benefits of a shingle and he doesn't care about the quality or whatnot that's being put on your house so can they offer you a, a true 130 mile an hour wind protection or uh, are they going to call the manufacturer or not call but get on and um, register your warranty for you Anybody can throw you some numbers and yeah, you get a warranty or whatever, but most manufacturers require that once the job is complete that you um, that you have it registered with them. I, I would 
pretty confident to say that most contractors don't do that. Um, so within a week's time, when we finish a job, we um, register your your warranty with Atlas. So you get their you know 15 year non prorated warranty and uh, 20 or lifetime warranty against algae and whatnot. So a uh, couple things to look out for, and then you know if you're most of the time you can talk to the guy or when you're talking to the guys or gals out there especially when they're knocking on your door are they are they pressuring you in high pressure sign a contract today let me put a sign out in the yard uh, those kind of things obviously if somebody's pressuring you uh, just stand up and say no definitely don't sign a contract um, there are ways out of it but uh, somebody can get real nasty over those situations so don't put yourself in a position to have to fight somebody to get out of some uh, some contract that they have you sign. So, just wanted to share a few things. Uh, it's it's always on my mind. It's one of the reasons, uh, one of the things that it just, just irritates me uh, is just sketchy contractors. And they're all, I mean, if you've had any experience, you know, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, Roofing contractors, is, you know, it's a nightmare to deal with somebody that, uh, you know, they, these guys run off with, with down, posit, down payments, deposits, uh, don't finish work, tell you that they're going to put starter on the house and are using three tab shingles as starter, uh, you know, using products that they, oh yeah, we'll do that, uh, we'll do this, we'll do that, uh, and they don't. Uh, you can easily see what they have delivered and see if it matches what their invoice says. Um, you know, uh, if, if a, one of the things I see is unpainted pipe checks. Why? If a contractor is too lazy or so forgetful to paint your pipe jacks, what else did he forget? It's one of the easiest things to do on our roof. Um, you know, I. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, why leave your your PVC white and expose the UV when it's supposed to be protected? And then uh, you know it, it looks awful. If you got a black roof and you got white PVC, and uh, most of the time these guys use these cheap plastic base uh, pipe jacks, uh, pipe boots, whatever you want to call them, and you know it, it just. That's a that's a made that's a sign to me that the guys were too lazy or too forgetful to do it. What else did they forget? Did they only put four nails instead of six in a shingle that's calling for six, or in an area like uh, Friendswood, Galveston areas like that, where they require no matter what the manufacturer says, they require uh, six nails uh, in your shingles, um, things like that. So things to watch out for. Uh, feel free to comment. Uh, subscribe to our new YouTube channel uh, I'm gonna bring more and more videos like this uh, but feel free to comment contact us if you have any questions if you just want a consultation um, and speak to us on the phone for a few minutes don't hesitate to call or text 281-216-3692 see you soon